So, good morning everyone. Dobry den všem, Praha. Good morning Praha. It's great to be here. How's everyone doing? Excited? Yeah, great. I'm really excited to be here. And this morning, I'm really excited because we're going to break down barriers to enterprise adoption of OpenStack. Who's excited to get into that with us? Woo! Let's have some fun. <laughs> So I'm going to share our journey, our operational journey to redefine OpenStack operations. So we're getting to operational enlightenment here today, but I don't think that is the best bit. That's not the bit I'm excited about. Who loves live demos? Live demos? Come on, let's have some live demos. So we're going to have some fun. Everything here is live and we're going to be doing it, um, having some fun together. So my name is Lachlan Evenson from Lithium Technologies. And I am a cloud builder, I'm a cloud deployer, and I'm an OpenStack contributor. And this is Jakub Pavlik. He's also in the same team as me. We're both deployers, contributors. And you know what we love the most? Eating our own dog food. So everything I'm sharing here today is from experience. We've been in the trenches, fighting the good war. And everything you're gonna see here today is um, a culmination of the last two years of knowledge that we've shared together and with the community. So I think that's a great outcome that we're here doing that. So with any journey, let's get started. Ragtag. So the beginning of our journey, I want to call Ragtag. Now, our mission at this part of the journey was to deploy OpenStack in the US. That was our mission. But how we did that was in a ragtag way. So what does ragtag really mean? It means you tie things together, they may not be connected, there may not be relationships, but you build a picture out of chaos, essentially. So the first part of our journey is ragtag. Let's dig into what that really meant. So when you start your OpenStack journey, what are you really trying to do? All you want to do is actually install and get OpenStack running, and you think, you know, that's it, mission accomplished, right? But I'm going to challenge you that it's a little bit deeper than that. So you go to the market, you look at how you install OpenStack, and you get a myriad of deployment tools, Ansible, Papa, Triple O, Fuel, just to name a few. And really, how do you make a decision at this point, having never run OpenStack, of how you make the decision of what to choose? So essentially, I just summed it up in, you just go with your gut. You take some tooling that you know, or your team knows, and you actually just start from there, and you implement that tooling, right? So that's the best shot that you can get. You click the button, you do the deployment. This is what happens. You don't know that this happens, right? It's magic. That's the beauty of a deployment tool. It should take care of the magic for you. But I don't, I'm not here to illustrate what this diagram is. I'm just here to illustrate that it actually lays down a complex framework of infrastructure, right? Which is what the deployment tool needs to do. But this infrastructure is generic. Uh, it may not be suited to your needs. As Adam said uh, earlier, you, what's your use case? So it's a generic, it may not even be ready for production, but you're not really sure of that right now. Your goal is installing and getting OpenStack running, and you've met that goal, right? So let's dig into that a little bit. So when we take a look at deployment tools, they're really good at deploying, but they're one shot in this day and age. You click them once, you get OpenStack, great. You click that again, and you blow up what you just built. So that is, kind of a dangerous state of affairs. And also, how do you actually manage what you just deployed? So everything that's out there, how do you actually run it on day two? It's an interesting predicament. So you actually find at this point of the ragtag journey that what you thought was the end was only the beginning, and deploying OpenStack is actually the easy part. So if we drill down into day two operations, what does that look like? You come in day two, you've got OpenStack up, you said to the company, we're done. You get an email, uh, there's some security patch, can you please deploy it to, all your, to your OpenStack infrastructure? Okay, great, yeah, how do I do that? So this is day two operations, backups, monitoring, documentation, uh, all these kind of things are not serviced by the deployment tool, and this is the, the shocking realisation of after day one. So if I'm to summarize really what the end of our ragtag journey would be, it's that our expectation was that the deployment tool managed ops. But the reality is 
that the deployment tool does not do ops. It just is really good at doing deployments. So then what happens? You've got a bunch of smart guys, and when you have a bunch of smart guys and guys and girls in a room, they all sit there and they go, we can build something ourselves. So the ops team start building the tool to do the day two operations. And that looks like a hack of scripts, manual hacks, and you build this tribal knowledge. So basically you have a team of people who each know a little bit about the puzzle, and heaven forbid one of them should leave because you lose a piece of knowledge in your OpenStack infrastructure. So to close out, ragtag does not equal your ideal workflow, right? So you need to level up. How do we bring operational structures to OpenStack? We want to deploy this and make it maintainable and scalable. So this is the next part of our journey. Let's look at ops. So what do we need to do to get from ragtag to ops? Let's define that. We sat down and we said, what do we want? We want something that is repeatable. We want a single source of truth. These are all best practices and ops. We want some kind of place where we can put all the knowledge. We want it to be versioned. We want a cloud that just gives us best practices, right? There are over 700 configuration options in Nova. We probably only need to touch four. Just give us the four we need to touch, not the 696 that we've done. And we want to be able to leave a personal experience in the cloud, right? We want our fingerprint to say, this is my cloud, I'm proud of what I built. So we want that flexibility of the whole workflow to leave our fingerprint. So you're left again, how do we deploy OpenStack? Now you go back out, is there anything to do this? Should we build our own again? Hang on, we've done this before. No. So we were pleasantly surprised because we have this massive community here. Surely this is a common problem. How can we actually get to this kind of workflow? Can we take a look at the community? So I was pleasantly surprised when I came across the OpenStack Salt project. Jakub, can yeah. you tell us a little bit about this? Uh, OpenStack Salt is a project which started development like one year or one and a half year ago. And now it's officially under Big Tent from the main this year. And it covers exactly everything what uh, Lucky mentioned. So it covers mostly operation and lifecycle management, upgrades, and it's not just about the configuration management tool, but about the workflow, which we are trying to explain here, and you will see in the second part of this presentation in later. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Jakub. And that's what we were really excited about, that it wasn't just deployment, it was workflow. So this project was also trying to do the day two and solve the day two operations in the single platform. So if we take a look at the outcome of our ragtag and operations journey, our US data center actually looked like it, patching was a mixed set of scripts, upgrades was not possible with the deployment tool, and, and worst of all, it wasn't scalable and repeatable. So we went, when we went on the second pass to build our EU data center, and we tried with the second model, this is what it looked like. So we had service oriented, we had it automated, it was backed up, it was all auditable through a Git workflow. So we had the visibility and we'd actually achieved all those operational paradigms that we'd set out and that's part of the goal. But, you know, as engineers it's never enough. We take a look at what it's still laying down and even though this is prod ready, it's modular, it's, uh, it's there ready for us to go, we still had 23 VMs. So I still felt we were treating the infrastructure as, you know, the operational thing as an infrastructure. So we were looking at it through an operational eyes. Is it really infrastructure or is it an application? That's what we were left questioning. How could we make this better? So we get to DevOps, right? Everybody knows DevOps. What it means is, is varied. But we wanted to get to the place where we could make this maintainable and scalable at a larger scale. So what does DevOps look like from us coming from ops? What do we want out of DevOps? We wanted just to look at OpenStack as a set of applications. So let's start treating it as such. We know how to deploy apps. How do we deploy apps? Let's make them immutable, composable, reusable. Let's break the pieces down. Let's not see things as VMs. Let's see these things as applications and services. So this was a new paradigm for us, and we know how to deploy apps. How do we deploy apps? In a microservice architecture, you can deploy them with containers. So we took a look at actually what we could do with containers, and we were pleasantly surprised that we could reuse OpenStack Salt to deliver OpenStack in containers and actually meet the needs 
of this DevOps cycle. So what I'm about to show, and, and Jakob's going to show a really cool demo, I'm very excited. Um, hold on to your seats because you might be going on the way. Jakob, take it away. Yes, so what I'm going to demonstrate right here now is uh, how we are de deploying the OpenStack in the containers. Uh, and what we did, uh, we sit together, uh, I think, two weeks ago, and uh, we uh, sit together with Lucky and my team and we realized how we could reuse existing solution to get them into the containers and do not develop again another tooling and then maintaining the, like, uh, let's say, legacy virtual machine world and the new one with different tools. So we built this amazing repo, which just very easily built by one script all the containers, all the images, and you can launch it on your laptop. But this is for a laptop, just deployment tool. But we put it together, and what I'm going to demonstrate right here today is how, uh, how we put it into the production, how to maintain it, how to scale it, how to get it into containers. So we actually deployed OpenStack inside of the Kubernetes. So let me explain you what I have here. It will be a little bit technical, so I mean, for some people it's difficult to understand, but Lucky will try to translate it. So, <laughs> so I have my Kubernetes cluster, which is basically five bare metal machines in our data center. And I divided them like three for OpenStack control services, like control plane, and two for the compute nodes. And what I have here now, now it's completely empty, so there is nothing, no deployment. So you're starting from scratch here? Yeah, I'm starting okay. from scratch, I have no deployment, no bots, nothing. So what I will do now is like launch the support, <coughs> launch the support services. So what do you define as support services? In the uh, I just launch the services what you need to do when you want to run the open state. So I launched the memcache uh, storage nodes, MySQL database, RabbitMQ messaging, so all the support services, what you need. And you can see that it's really, really uh, fast. And actually I have deployment with one instance and now it's available. In five seconds I have running the database and in about 35 seconds I have uh, prepared my database and whole support cluster Running there. Okay, 35 seconds is the new baseline. Now, because we have it running, <coughs> it should be like like 30 seconds, we can create the OpenStack part. So now I launch the OpenStack, and because our standard part of, of Enterprise Ready Solution is SDN as well, I started Open Contrail, which is Neutron plugin for the SDN, and now I have the deployments. Yeah. So not only have you deployed OpenStack, you've deployed an SDN as well. Yes, exactly. Okay. So I have All right. I'm with you. I have standard services like Keystone Plant, Cinder, and then I have the, the open contrail. So it's running. I can see the deployments as well as as a pod. What's a pod? Pod is actually in some cases uh, Docker container, so in Memcache for example, it's one for one single instance of Docker container. In case of Nova, you can see that it should be six, like each container for each service. Nova API, Nova scheduler, Nova conductor. It's crashing because it takes like one minute. It's not expecting to start so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it needs one minute it takes when time. all the services get up and running. And now, we can actually... So, Jakob, you know me, I'm a show me the money guy. Prove to me that this thing works. So, as well as deployments, I have uh, services. And services are actually, are actually the endpoints. So, where running each service, on which port. So, in case of Keystone, it's this IP address on this port. So, I prepare... So, what are they? Are they like load balancers? Or? Yeah, it's automatically okay. load balancered. The, each service balancing on each container. Okay. Uh, so we can check the my Keystone RC file for the managing of OpenStack. I prepared, so I have same address like for Keystone. Uh, I have here, so I can source uh, source my Keystone RC file. And let's try the Keystone user list. Okay, so 
I yeah. have now the Keystone is running. Yeah, Keystone okay. is running with all the users, with all the tenants, with all the endpoints. What about Glance? Glance API yeah. running. So let's try the Cinder. Yeah. Running. Can you like create something to prove yeah, this is not let's, money for money? Let's show the SDN as okay, well. Yeah, let's do it with the SDN. So yeah, so let's create some, some network. All right. Yeah, so okay, I so have a state date prior network. Fantastic. Okay. <coughs> yeah, so, so what's the next? Well, let me see. I see that everything's one. How can that be redundant? Yeah. Can you do anything about that? Actually, yes, because now I'm running only one instance, one container. If yeah, crash, yeah. you yeah. lose the service. So, how's so availability? How's how the scale? Yeah, yeah, so let's, let's run the scale. And again, uh, OpenStack and replicas number three. So, let's scale on three replicas from each. This is going to take a while, right? Mm, I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I scaled, and you can see that now I have three instances from each, yeah? Like in several seconds. Okay, yeah. Okay, you got me now, but you need to get a little bit better with this, so uh, I don't know where you're going. Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. We can, uh, uh, probably no it's still starting. Okay. Uh, so let's run the open compu uh, compute node side, because yeah, we, for we, 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 we forgot to start the uh, OpenStack compute, so we actually running libvirt and nova compute in containers as well okay one of my lists and now looks like no is is never running no uh, come on yeah, yeah it's so, we have no, so we got the full contingent there now but you know what if, if we're going to say that this is enterprise ready can you upgrade this uh yes okay well, yeah. show me that come on yeah. yeah so what we have now is like uh because enterprises need to be able to upgrade, you know that. Let's check the version of Intron. Now we have, I think, Kilo. So yeah, let's yeah, jump yeah. onto the container. And check the version, like Intron server version. Okay. Yeah, this is, so this we're, on, is, we're on Kilo. Yeah, this is, this is Kilo stable, stable version. And so, now. How do you actually do an upgrade? Show me that. This is going to be complex, right? So I have my uh, salt master, which is orchestrator node, which, which deploy all the stuff. And what I have to do is like change this single line from Kilo to Liberty. And then number of replicas, because we are now running Yeah, we need a redundant. Month. So this is my, usually you are going through the Git versioning system. I'm okay, so to... what you've just done is used OpenStack Salt to perform an yeah, update. Yeah, yeah. Let's run on the, on the Kubernetes master. Uh, what, like, did you, what did you just do? You asked... uh, I just, because Kubernetes used the manifests, and the manifests are the launch. And we are generating the manifest because otherwise I have to go into each manifest, change each single version of. So it's it's automated. It's yeah, it's automated. Okay. You can see that I change my neutron deployment definition from replicas one to replica three, and change the Docker image version from Kilo to Liberty. And now let's upgrade. So okay. Apply and. Apply it on my stuff. Should we go get a coffee now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> or is this, this is going to be quick? What did you do just here? Yeah, I just launched the watch and we can see how the containers are replaced lifetime, the bots, how the bots are. So it's actually keeping the service available. Yeah, it it's keeping it available all the time. So it's just okay. one by one switching the containers and application and it takes like I don't know, 40 seconds to, to complete and roll them out. Yeah, to, to what you should end up with is three of everything available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything, is, everything is available. So let's just hold on. And can you show me a look at the pods? What's happening over there? Yeah. On both sides, you can see actually how we're terminating the old one instances and starting, uh, starting the new one. And if we check the 
deployments again. Okay, it looks like we're, we're almost normalized. Or normalized, so it shows. Works. Okay. And now prove show, that me, show me that Neutron still got that network he created. I'm not lying that it was really upgrade and no, no, uh, no replace or like disable and enable. Okay, so minus still the error stack type for our network. Yeah. I don't know if that's ever been done before. So just, yeah. just show me the deployment again. So what we've done is just created a production ready open stack yes. and upgraded it in eight minutes. Yeah. Has that ever been done before? I think that's the first. Fantastic. Thank you very much for the upgrade. So as I said, we're here to break down the barriers to enterprise adoption. So we're really going after making this easy for enterprises uh, to consume and operate. And the best thing is we actually collabor collaborated under an open stack project. So I think this is a great result. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more, there's a deep dive session into exactly how we built this. And in a few weeks, we're going to make it all open source so that, so that you can start getting work up and running, solve your dev problems and your production problems, and really start getting your hands dirty. So I invite you to attend that session. Uh, now I'll open up the floor to any questions. Um, I'll be around all day, so feel free to ask us anything. We're really excited to share this with you. Any questions? The gentleman over here. So the question was, we're using an orchestrator to manage another orchestrator. Uh, we actually need a single source of truth. So usually each deployment is Git repository, which YAML files, which defines everything. Yeah? Which defines even bare metal infrastructure, because we need to deploy bare metal, deploy Kubernetes as well, and then manifest for Kubernetes. So we are using salt, OpenStack salt for delivering everything. And I think I think a little bit more to dig into your question there, an, an orchestrator to deliver an orchestrator. So it was about breaking out the underlying infrastructure from the services that run on top. And what we were trying to get to was actually to be able to lay down that infrastructure um, much faster. And we used Kubernetes, and we built Kubernetes under Salt as well, so that you can actually have the ability to lay down OpenStack much, much quicker. The gentleman up the back here. Uh, how do you handle database migration with multiple replicas? The is question was, how do we handle uh, database migration with multiple replicas? Yeah. So if you've actually looked at, actually you can answer this. Uh, actually, it's SyncDB runs in every app in a loop. I don't know if you've ever looked at the code, but it's actually saying, is the schema correct? Is the schema correct? Uh, so it's running that in a loop. I, but if you wanted to talk about, I think that the that, question is uh, towards to Galera cluster and okay. stuff like that. Sure. We have single instance of MySQL. Yes, because uh, we still in in production. We can federate the stuff like running uh, databases in VMs, standard VMs, and the rest run in the containers. But <coughs> it works in Kubernetes as well. Yeah, yeah even though we showed that everything was in Kubernetes today, there are still elements that we wanted to keep in VMs for stability reasons right now, like our um, you know our data store, Galera in, in OpenStack. So we could actually pick and choose and say, hey, we want the front end Nova Glance applications to be in containers but we can leave uh, Galera and, and maybe some of the messaging still in VMs using it. You can pick and choose. Any other questions? I have a question. Oh. Uh, how, I, how I can get it, you know, how I can deploy it, and I'll be sure that I can deploy it, but how difficult is it to start with this? Yeah, well, so I invite you to come to that session this afternoon because we're going to actually show you how you can develop on this platform, on your laptop, <laughs> on the train, on the way to work and actually roll out the same from that single source of truth, the production infrastructure. So I think I invite you uh, to come to that session and actually get your hands dirty. Any other questions? Well, fantastic. Thank you for having us. It was really great to be here. Thank you very much for having us.